of my colleagues on this platform have also practiced for that long and some even more. What I discovered is that when we join this profession, and I don't think it has changed, we are briefed more about our responsibilities to other people, to litigants, to clients, the court, and everybody, and all the don'ts that we should not do. But hardly, hardly, hardly are we taught or trained about what we should do for ourselves, especially to live a balanced life. What I realize is that if a lawyer is financially stressed and challenged and he can't plan his life, he can't plan for the future of himself and the children, even the entire justice administration suffers. But we learn the rules about court practice, about professional ethics, about making submissions, about writing opinions, but we hardly learn about how to build capacity for making wealth for ourselves in the proper manner and to sustain this wealth in an enduring way and also take care of our health and our well-being. Thank God that we have His Excellency, the former Deputy Governor of Lagos State of Bafini Pedro with us and also other distinguished speakers who will take us through this. I want us to sit back and learn from them. You are most welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Dola, Thank uh, you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, sir. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Lovery. Thank you for kicking us off with those remarks. Um, because we've waited a bit, I want us to go straight away into the topic and kickstart I know you're all such um, very busy professionals and I want to thank everyone for joining us. We're so, so grateful. And um, let me say to our participants, we have about 70 people online now that um, we've carefully chosen the speakers and we're gonna get value and learn a lot. Otuba Femi Pedro, our first speaker, former deputy governor of Lagos. It's good to see you, sir. Thank you for My joining pleasure. us. Thank, thank you, you Mrs. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Jasmine. Onyekwe, all the way from Canada. Good to see you, Ma. Thank you. And thank you, Mrs. Tony Araleko. But um, I'll tell you about our, our guest speakers a little later on in the program. But let's start with Otumba Femi Pedro. You already saw his bio, so I'm not going to read it. But let me just say that he's a man of many parts, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Chairman, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, is an economist, a banker, an entrepreneur, an investor, a political leader, just one person, <sighs> and an author of the book Formula for Wealth. And I think that's the part that particularly concerns us now because we're going to be speaking on wealth creation and management. Thank you so much, sir. So over to you. We can't wait to learn. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, all. I'm delighted to be here with you at this webinar. A big thank you to Love Breed Academy and uh, Mr. Live about today, SAN, for extending this invitation to me. Let me also congratulate all of us for surviving this pandemic. Please continue to stay safe. Being alive and healthy at this period is more important than anything. Today, I'll be discussing wealth creation and your financial well being. Let me begin first by recognizing the peculiarities of your profession as lawyers. Unlike many others in society, you are guided by rules of professional conduct that spells out certain restrictions and boundaries. This notwithstanding, it's my view that you have unlimited opportunities to create wealth while advancing your career as lawyers. May I present to you first my award-winning book, The Formula for Wealth. The book is about wealth creation, a methodical approach to, through successful entrepreneurship and investing. I've shared my personal experience and knowledge acquired over 40 years in this book, and I've developed time-tested and universal foundational principle which I believe could make a difference in your personal and professional life. Let me first of all begin with uh, a very simple concept I'm going to share on the screen, what I call 
excuse me, what I call the wet ladder. This is a very simple concept that I've developed. You can see four people climbing the ladder. The person at the bottom end is at the bottom end is in poverty trap. Poverty trap is a state of perpetual financial struggle. You don't want to be trapped there, but many of us started life in one degree of poverty trap or the other. Just by simply relying on your salary alone, you are in poverty trap. If you are renting where you live, you are in poverty trap. If you do not, don't have any other investment other than what you earn at the end of the month, you are in poverty trap. And if you struggle to pay your rent, you are in poverty trap. If your children's school fees are coming due and you are afraid and worried, you are under stress, you are in poverty trap. If you have some health condition or somebody in your family require medical attention and you cannot afford to pay for it, you are in poverty trap. So if you feel belong to any of this, take it that you are in poverty trap. It's not a good way, a good place to be. You want to be at the second level of that ladder. That is a position of financial security. When you have financial security at the minimum, it means that you have a roof over your head that you can call your home. You do not pay rent. You have transportation that can move you from point A to point B, and you can change it every three to four years without stress. You can take care of your children's education. You can take care of your health. You can feed your family. You can do the basic needs of life. You can provide them for yourself. This is where to be. This is what everybody dream of. Then by the time you get to financial independence, that's a much higher level. I don't have time to explain that. And of course, the ultimate is to have absolute financial freedom. You can have money and still be in poverty trap because money is not worth. There are a lot of people in our society that has money. Maybe they are in position of power, maybe they have inheritance, maybe they just won lottery, or maybe they are entertainers or athletes who get a large sum of money at a go. But they are not worthy because that money is liquid. It can vanish anytime. It can disappear. There's a world of difference between being worthy and having money. Wealth itself is the state of being materially prosperous. When you are worthy, you have a feeling of empowerment. You are in control of your life. And you can tell that you are worthy only if you have ownership of wealth instruments. That is what qualifies you to be a worthy person. If you have a real estate investment, you are worthy. If you have equity, shares, and stock, you are worthy. If you have fixed deposits in bank account, you are worthy. Because all this creates income for you. Your fixed deposit gives you interest income. Your real estate investment gives you rental income. Your shares or equity in the capital market gives you equity, I mean, dividend income. So all this generates additional income for you. So even if you lose your job today, you are still okay. But if you rely only on your income, what you earn from your job, the day you lose your job, you are penniless, you are in disarray. That now qualifies you to be in poverty trap. So what I try to encourage people to do is that while they are growing up in their profession, they are also creating wealth for themselves. As you can see, this gentleman says, his name is Robert Kioski. It's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep and how hard it works for you. The simple difference between somebody in poverty and somebody who is wealthy is that the person in poverty works for money. The person who is wealthy, money works for him. And that's where you want to position yourself. So that is the main difference. And I want you to take cognizance of this. It's very, very important. So um, quite a lot of us, I'm sure many of you listening to me here today, probably will now be telling yourself, am I really in poverty trap? Let me just also explain. You can be a senior partner in your law firm. You can be a general manager in your company. You can be a managing director of your business, but you can still be in poverty trap. 
There are people who work all their life for 30 years, for 40 years, and they retire into penury. They are probably in the university teaching as professors or they work as lawyers, they go from, and they struggle financially from day one till they retire. And then they retire again, they continue to struggle. And so this is why I'm preaching this message that you don't have to be there. You can change your life today. You can begin to think of creating wealth for yourself. So how do you start to create wealth? Fundamentally, I develop what I call certain rules of wealth. And these rules of wealth, like I said, they are universal. They are applicable to any situation you find yourself. Whether you are a lawyer or you are a professional, you are an engineer, you are a doctor, it does not matter. If you want to create wealth, the first thing you need, these are the rules of wealth that I've developed. I won't have time to go through all of them, but I'll just briefly explain some of, some of them to you. The first one I said, you must have a positive wealth mindset. That is, you must now be thinking differently. You must not tell yourself that I'm now in a new realm. I want to create wealth. I want to change from somebody who just rely on my monthly salary. I now want to develop other assets that can generate income for me. So you change your mindset, your subconscious. Some of us were born and grew up in households that put us in a box, in a certain box. They condition our mind that, oh, once you finish university, you must look for a job. Once you find a job, you must just settle down and continue to earn your salary. Once you settle down, you must start fighting for promotion. And then you are waiting to be manager, to be senior manager, to be partner, to be senior manager, partner, to be senior advocate of Nigeria. But this does not change you. You can still be poor. You can be getting promotion every year. The thing most people don't understand is that rising up in your career does not change anything. Because the higher you hand, the more you spend if you are not conditioned to create wealth and you continue to struggle because your expenses increases and it changes. So I want you to change your positive mindset. You now have to think differently. I wish I have enough time to explain this, but if you have my book, you will read much more about having a positive mind, mindset. This man, Thomas Stanley says it all. Before you can become a millionaire, you must learn to think like one. You must learn how to motivate yourself to counter fear with courage. Most of the people who have achieved successes that I have met and have created great wealth, they act and think differently than the rest of us. And that is the truth of it. You will find out that those who don't have, money, who don't have wealth, who have money, they tend to make a lot of noise. They throw big parties. They buy expensive cars. They wear 10 jewelries on their neck. You know, they try to show the whole world that they have arrived. But these are really empty barrels. Millionaires don't behave like that. The truly wealthy are very conservative. They don't just throw money around. They don't make too much noise. And they have certain attributes and mindsets that we should all imbibe if you want to, you know, if you want to get to that, to that level. Well, another rule that I want to mention is dreams. You are a practicing lawyer. If you want to dream of being wealthy, you can start dreaming today and dreams and determination makes a world of difference. You can never attain to anything if you don't dream of it. If you don't start dreaming of it, working towards it, it becomes your passion, your passion. So you must find a passion, something that makes you feel you know, differently. Anytime you think of it, your body shakes. You, know, you are committed to it. You are, I mean, it's your life. I will explain this later. For you, I'm advising that if you are not into it yet, put yourself in a world of investment and begin to have passion for investment. Begin to learn about investment. Let it be your second hobby, apart from your legal career. Let it be something that will trigger your interest. Everywhere you go, everything you see about investment, you pick it up and read it. And you may now decide that which particular investment I want to focus on. It could be, uh, okay, I'm a lawyer, I'm practicing, but I really want to start to put my money in real estate. So you want to also begin to understand about real estate investment, how you can go about it. 
how you can begin to accumulate funds and investment to be able to get to that level where you can see and now begin to acquire this wealth instrument that will create extra income for me that will give me financial security. Another very important aspect of this is, is what I call the pers your personal and financial discipline. If you want to create wealth, if you don't have this discipline, you will not be able to. You will fall flat on your face. This financial discipline is, is in, in fact very, very key. It's very important. Because from day one, you must start to set aside certain part of your income. What, whatever percentage you can afford to, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%. You must start to set them, set it aside and start to invest no matter how small. I started investing in 1984 at the age of 28. That was when I started investing. And what spurred me to start was that I needed to pay my rent and I couldn't raise the rent. So I went to the bank across the street to apply for a short loan. And the manager gave me a form to fill. And I had to tick certain boxes, uh, collateral security. Do you have shares and stock? No. Do you have real estate? No. Do you have anybody who can guarantee you? No. Do you have any other assets? No. Even if I submitted the form, I knew I was not going to get the loan. And I left the place wondering, I've been working for two years, and I don't even have nothing to show for it. That day, I went across the street, opened an account with a, an investment firm, and I gave them instructions, strict instructions. Once every month, just take this amount out of my salary, even before I see the salary. Just take it and begin to invest it for me. And that's how I started. And I started building up my portfolio. And I became so engrossed in it. Now you can say, oh, what is in the Nigerian capital market? Some people have lost money. If you want to do investing, then you must acquire the knowledge. You must read, you must get, get literature, you must study what is happening in the market. You must know what is going on around you. And real estate invest, I mean, uh, equity investment is not the only form of investment, but it's a very, very key aspect of investment. So financial discipline is very important. I don't know how old you are, but if you are in your middle ages, 20, 30, 40, and you, don't, and you are in poverty trap, you have no business spending money lavishly. You have no business wasting money. You have, you have no business living on stations, their lifestyle. If you do, if you don't discipline yourself, poverty will discipline you. You will continue to struggle. You want to wear Gucci clothes. You want to carry iPhone 11. You want to drive the latest car because your friends are doing the same thing. Yeah, it's good. You will enjoy it temporarily. But after a few months or a few years, then you begin to struggle. And that's why a lot of people struggle. So discipline is very important. And I, don't, I just want us to take it very seriously. This aspect is key for me. You know, character, your character, your integrity defines you, particularly in a country like ours, where this has been thrown to the dogs. Most of our leaders, most people around you, most of us don't live above board. Uh, we easily compromise our character because we feel the environment we live in is a very tough place. But I've had real life experience. And I'll give you a short aspect of that experience later on. It's all, it's all here in my book. I believe that if you want to create wealth and want to be successful at it, you must have this. It's very key. And there's no halfway to it. If you compromise it, it will catch up with you. You can see people around you who seem to be doing very well because they, are, they have cheated their way to the top or they have caught corners. And you know, you feel that's the way to go. But let me be honest with you, it's only short term. At the end of the day, in the longer run, it will catch up with you. So this, uh, some of these are very, very key. Um, then I will just, let me just quickly jump to the one aspect of my book that I will just keep today is on fundamentals of entrepreneurship. Um, it's very, is a very important aspect, but for you guys, uh, because you can't run a business while you are lawyers, you know, that's why I'm focusing more on investing. Investing is also very important to you. And let me just give you a 
a personal experience. In the year 1988, I was approached, I was a young man in my early 30s, and I was approached by a friend of mine who told me that there are three guys, and there are two guys that are thinking of starting a bank. And will I want to come and meet them so I can help them put the papers together? And I said, fine, because I was working at the central bank earlier before, before I moved to a bank called Four City Marshall Bank. And I decided to, okay, visit them. And I met with them. I was surprised to find two young men, the same age with me, 32, 33 years old. And they were talking about their dream. They wanted to start a bank. And I said, are you guys, how do you, how do you think you will raise the money? He said, don't worry. Just do this job for us, and then we'll take it from there. And then I took the papers away, prepared the facility report, submitted it to them. They were happy about my work. And then it was when I submitted the report and I started thinking, wait a minute, this has always been my own dream. I would have loved to own a bank. I was working in a bank that was owned by a gentleman, and I happened to be his executive assistant. The bank is FCMB. The man was Otumba Shibomimbalu when I was working directly with him. And I used to admire him, he was my mentor. And I, it was always in my head that I hope one day I can be like this man. And here I was in the midst of two young men and they said that they wanted to start a bank. So I said, okay, I would like to join you. They said, you can't afford it. I said, well, how much do I need? And they gave me the amount, 200,000 Naira minimum requirements. At that time, my annual salary was 45,000 Naira. So you can imagine, what was the natural thing to do? I could have just walked away and said, oh, this is not possible. But because it was my dream, and I saw an opportunity, and I decided that I would seize on it. And I insisted that I would look for the money. I had no way at that time to raise that money. But I left that place feeling, feeling determined that I will raise this money. This is an opportunity for me to be part owner of a bank. And within a period of nine months, I just told my wife, I said, wait a minute, this is an opportunity for us. I've been dreaming about it. So you have to make sacrifices like me. From now till I put this money together, we have nothing at all. I sold my car. I put together every penny I was able to garner. And I took a risk. I put this money in that bank, a newly licensed bank that has not been tested. And I was employed. I had to move from my former office. I joined the bank as a fact. I was the first staff. And the two owners, the two primary promoters became the MD and the deputy MD. I was employed as a senior manager. And that was how my life was transformed. Within a period of eight years, my 200,000 Naira investment in that bank became over 200 million Naira in worth. That is investment for you. The bank today is still around, Guarantee Trust Bank. But I took a chance because I was determined. But the point I'm trying to make here is that you can do the same thing. I made sacrifices for those nine months. If you find an opportunity that can change your life, you can also make those sacrifices. I could have used that 200,000 Naira to take a vacation. I could have used it to buy a brand new car. I could have used the money to do so many things and I would have forgotten about it and I wouldn't be where I am today. So that is investing. Investing can also be in private enterprise. Some few years later, I had another opportunity to actually buy my own bank. And what did I do? I sold all my shares in Guarantee Trust Bank and I used the joint hands with three others and bought a bank. And I became the managing director of that bank. I owned about 20% of that bank at that time. And so I moved from, because investment was already in my blood. Every time I hand my bonus, my profit share, my salary, I just threw it on investment. If I hear a real estate opportunity, I jump at it. I will acquire it. I will find somebody I can team up with. And, and that's the thing about investment. You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. Some years again down the line, I think around two, the year 2001, I just heard from somebody that federal government was going to privatize some assets. And then we looked at the list and someone caught my attention. It was the Koyi Hotel. And I called three or four of my friends. I said, hey, this is an opportunity. Let's look for money to buy it. And we put money together. 
I had to sell some of my other investment, borrow money here and there, you know, and then we acquired that hotel. And by the time I sold my own shares in that hotel after a few years ago, I mean, its return was in multiples of what I invested in it. So you have to keep your eyes wide open. But all this, I'm telling you, I started with just working across my office to open an investment account. That's how I started. And you will tell yourself, some of you will be saying, ah, you can say that now. How much am I earning? After all, I don't earn much. I want me to be setting aside some certain percentage on investment. If you do not invest at 50,000 Naira a month, you will never invest at 1 billion Naira a month. It's an habit. And if, you are not, if you don't have that habit, you will be spending everything that you earn. That is the thing. Even if you become the managing partner of your farm, you will be perpetually broke. You will continue to struggle. You will find it difficult. If you are in your 50s now, you might be saying to yourself, it's too late for me to start. It's not too late for you to start, unless you are retired. If you are not yet retired, you are going to retire one day, and you are going to be asking yourself the same question. Where am I going, what am I going to do on retirement? Is it my retirement benefit that I will be relying on? So you have to start thinking now. Investing for me is an art, it's part of me. I enjoy doing it. Even after I left office, in fact, the truth of the matter is that when I became deputy governor of Lagos State, the four years I spent, I lost more than half of my wealth. And that's the truth, because I couldn't focus on it. The code of conduct forbid us from running any business, or so I just handed them over to my broker, and I couldn't focus. And then the bank that I left was merged with another bank, you know, there was consolidation, and so many things happened. You know, but I knew that if I had not gone to take that appointment, I would be 10 times where we are today. But I have no regrets at all. But it's, it's very important that you take a methodical approach. Uh, it's not something, it's not a 100 meter dash, it's a marathon. It takes years. If you are 25 today, you start today, by the time you are 35, you see a major difference in your life. You feel more comfortable about yourself, you feel more relaxed, you know that you are not under pressure. You make some sacrifices today. That's very important. You have to make sacrifices now so that in future, you can get, see a, a world of difference in your life. I wish I had all the time in the world, but I think I will stop now to allow questions to come later on. I'm I hope I've not exceeded my time. Thank you very much for listening. And I, I will take uh, questions. Thank you.